Capricorn, welcome on in. Welcome on in to your 2022 annual reading. We're going to cover a lot of astrology here. And uh, I'll be shuffling while we're talking astrology and see what kind of cards randomly fall out. And, you know, I'll just go as spirit leads, okay? We are covering um, three main areas of life. So if you want to just skip ahead, you can. I mean, I will be covering some main energies uh, in the first portion of this reading. But then we're going to get on to uh, relationships and romance, career and money, and then close out with some health and healing advice. Let me also remind you, it is a general reading, right? People know this, don't they? But we got to say it for those who don't. And I'm sorry to just keep beating the drum. Uh, but it's not a private reading. That's what that means when I say this is a general reading. So you can't take it like it's just for you. It's a reading going out to so many people. If you want the most accurate, detailed reading just for you, you got to get a private reading. And yeah, if you want to know how to get that from me, I'm going to have the uh, link in the comments down below. I'll pin it to the top of the comments so you can click over to my website and get, you know, uh, set up for a private reading. And I think it's a great investment for the year ahead because it really helps you to look at the energies that are uniquely impacting you and figuring out, you know, how to use them to your advantage. Okay. But generally speaking, I think that this is going to most resonate for those of you who are Capricorn rising. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, because it's not your sun sign, right? You can watch your sun sign, you can watch your moon. But if you don't know what your rising is, which I think is most important here, you need to go to a website like astro.com, Cafe Astrology, or my personal favorite, astromatrix.org. Those of you who are liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, I really appreciate it because... It's brutal out there, right? YouTube land has, has you know, oh, don't get me started. It, it, it's been a mountain, it's been a mountain I don't wish anyone to climb. I mean, if anyone could do it, though, it's a Capricorn, right? Yes. So let's get into this reading for 2022 for Capricorn. Let's talk about the main energies first this year. I think that because of the where, where the nodes are, that's really focusing your efforts, your, your sense of direction this year. You've got the North Node um, early this year in your fifth house having to do with fun, dating, romance, children, creative projects. And then, you know, uh, later on in this year, it'll shift back. It'll shift into the fourth house having to do with home, family, sense of belonging. And... What does that do to your south node? Okay, your south node is showing where the emphasis is not. Okay, it's being pulled from that area because you're having to maybe release release your focus so that you could focus on those uh, fourth and fifth house matters. Well, um, the south node for you this year is going to start out in the 11th house, having to do with all things Aquarian, uh, friends, social networking, Maybe colleagues, okay, this this idealism, these ambitions, maybe something having to do with social media. Um, and then later on in the year, the South Node will slip into your 10th house having to do with career, status, life purpose, destiny, your public life, okay? So I am seeing that um, earlier in this year, well, there we go, Knight of Pentacles, you will be making some progress, okay, financially, materially. Um, I didn't want to go down. Oh, you get in the victory with, I think, some financial goals and some material goals. Um, but it's going to come after reaching agreement. Uh, you're you're going to get that victory once you get into agreement. It might come through a contract, um, a moment of clarity, a bright idea that comes through. Um, the truth of the matter, okay is really key to you getting progress this year. Um, but I do feel that because, you know, the first half of this year with that North Node in the fifth house, South Node 11th, it is maybe putting some friendships and goals in the backseat of your life. Although ideally we want to balance these dualities out. <laughs> um, you know, you could be more focused on having more fun earlier this year. And there's a king of wands, so perhaps a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius is relevant to you. Or for some of you, it's entrepreneurship. Some of you, it is working as an um, in media or um, marketing. But I think this first part of the year, well, the cards are telling me if you want to get the victory, you're going to have to um, 
I think some of you, this is in business, all right? Some of you going after a contract that gives you some forward movement. Now, in April, when the North Node goes into your fourth house, it's shifting your focus from fun dating, romance, creative projects onto home, family, sense of belonging. And you might feel the second half of this year with the house placement shifting for the nodes that your career begins taking more of a back seat. Whereas initially at the beginning, uh, maybe you had a lot of creative projects going on um, and that was moving you forward. This is a very creative energy, by the way. But the second half of the year uh, could be different. These transits uh, might leave you feeling a bit unsettled and definitely from April onward with the North Node in that fourth house, it's going to leave you maybe striving to find more stability in your life, more that sense of belonging, finding your comfort zone. But again, if, if it's a struggle to find that, that kind of, you know, to be able to settle into something, I think that, you know, you're going to have to be very cautious about not letting this stress you out to the point of it wearing on your mental health. Um, we're going to talk more about that at the final segment when we get into health and healing, okay? Now, where's your good luck? Where are your lucky breaks this year? I think it's going to be found in your third and fourth houses. Third house being about your local community, um, people that you interact with on the day-to-day, -day, um, maybe siblings, relatives. And then later on in the year, it'll be in the fourth house, having to do with home, family, sense of belonging. And what I'm seeing here is with the magician, lover's card, and six of wands, and seven of pentacles well again we're talking about where's the good luck and fortune here i think you're going to be able to manifest through partnerships you're going to get a lot of victory through partnerships yes it could be you know marriage it could be these really long-term commitments that you've had in your life people you've known for your life you know it could be a business partnership um, but again, I'm seeing with both of these cards, a long, long-term investment. People that are in it for the long haul, you're going, or, or they're coming, may they might come in new. All right. But that's, these are people in it for the long haul. That's where you're going to get victory. And that's where you're going to be able to get some good luck and fortune and manifestation. So yeah, I mean, it might be family members. Okay. For some of you, well, we're going to get more into this reading and figure out that see if that comes out if we can get more more detail on that other people it's you know in your local community where again if you've really put down roots where you live and you've known people like you grew up with them y'all know you know people i mean i can see that as well coming out um but i'm going to say january through may and december when jupiter is in your third house there could be a lot of exchanging of ideas um, some of you possibly moving during this time there are probably going to be some small transitions like maybe just it could be that you're simply learning something new getting a new skill others of you you know something small like just getting closer to a, a sibling or a distant relative but it's going to be a great energy for building relationships and i'm seeing that here and i'm seeing investment and then after May, when Jupiter goes into your fourth house, I think that is putting more, you know, like I said, of the focus on home and family. That would be really good if you are trying to start a family or you're wanting to add to a family. And it's also good if you're just maybe maybe you're not at that age stage in life. You just want to make improvements to your home. And some positive changes could really happen in your home during this time. And I'm seeing the Knight of Cups coming up here where um, there could be, you know, a romantic offer for some of you or more romance in the home, more, uh, I don't know why I'm getting music playing, people buying art, selling, uh, hanging art on the walls, decorating, and that's not, that's, that's not pretty right there. We'll, we'll see what that's about, okay? I think that some of you are going to be wanting to get more emotional security uh, with family, okay? You are uh, pursuing more contact with family members during this time, and again, well, you know, usually we would look at a Knight of Cups, you know, it's almost like a romantic offer. But again, because this came out while I was talking about home and family, and then we've got that Three of Swords there. I'm going to say that I feel that some of you, if you in the second half of this year are feeling disconnected, emotionally disconnected or emotionally insecure about your relationships with your family, 
this is you really putting yourself out there like it on an emotional level but i mean not not just feeling it's like taking action to back up those feelings to deal with this maybe this isolation or hurt or separation feelings um, that have maybe divided you from people that you actually really love. So where you're getting challenges this year, dealing with maybe some setbacks, some obstacles um, are going to be in your first and second houses. Um, but I think mostly throughout this year, dealing with second house having to do with your personal income, your possessions, self-worth. First house is, you know, having a lot to do with your, just your sense of self, your identity, and the way that you're being seen out in the world, your reputation, okay? And we'll talk more about this in the career and money portion. Um, we'll go into a lot more detail, but I don't really see any, well, that wanted to peek out. Some of you being very conservative, frugal with your resources, all right? And again, when we get into career and money cards, probably going to get into more detail as to why. Why you're holding back and, you know, how, how it is that maybe you can kind of loosen things up this year with your finances. At the foundation, wow, we've got five of swords not a fan because it's telling me that there's an issue here with getting agreement and i saw that from the right out the gate that if you want to get progress in your life in a very tangible substantial way you're going to have to find agreement there's power in agreement yet there's an issue here with disagreement i think that is just kind of coloring this entire year um finding these win-win solutions when maybe you're at odds with people and if you can't come into agreement and get on the same page then i there's there could be defeat here which is really directly you know mirroring this ace showing agreement victory this is showing totally opposite disagreement defeat so we'll put that off to the side and we'll see if any of these cards come up again because interestingly they have a way of reappearing <laughs> they, they have a way of reappearing in the um the other readings let's move on to you know love specifically relationships and romance for capricorn 2022 so while i'm shuffling um let me say that if you are single this year it's going to be a year where you can build trust in your relationships which yeah, I saw it. You might, by the way, have two prospects with those, but, you know, because I saw, you know, two knights coming in. One really romantic, one really just kind of bringing the goods to the table, all right? But, again, this is indicating to me an energy of what I just said, that, um, you know, you have the opportunity to build trust in a relationship this year. Uh, yes, overall, whether you're single or coupled or don't care, <laughs> uh, there could be some random twists and turns in your love life um, because Uranus is in your fifth house. So again, you've got the opportunity to build trust. And if you're single, um, you could find love and maybe even settle down with somebody um, or at least settle into a deepened commitment, which is lovely. Um, but it's also likely that you're going to find love with maybe somebody who's slightly younger than you. Again, with those knights, some of you might be somebody under 30, okay, or they're just very young at heart. They come across very young at heart. Um, or they might make you feel like, you know, young again, okay. Um, could be a lot of dating and travel. Um, again, with those knights, and there's another knight of chalices, all right, um, where... You know, there's some kind of idealization or ro romanticization, is that a word, <laughs> uh, of what's being offered here. Um, but I, I, I'm also seeing somebody maybe holding back a little bit emotionally. Um, it, it's maybe kind of a modest offer, like, let's see where this goes. Um, but I do see that, yeah, if you, if you want to do some dating this year, you've got prospects coming in. And uh, maybe even have, you know, mixing in with that, some traveling, going on some, you know, little day trips together. That just sounds lovely. Um, some of you, this might happen with a friend who becomes a lover. 
but one thing that's going to be required in order to move this forward and advance it is for you to probably break some old worn out patterns and relationships which is not exactly your style right no offense it's just you know y'all like to do the tried and true y'all can be rather predictable um usually usually right i mean i don't know about your specific natal chart it's a general reading right but regardless i i just see overall um generally speaking capricorn rising you're gonna have to get rid of maybe some things that have just gotten tired stale worn out and be more willing to be spontaneous and try something new and shake something up okay might be manifesting something with a Virgo might get a love offer from a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, or a Virgo. I see some of you um, possibly dating this person. I am concerned, though, um, that somebody might be just in fantasy land about trying to manifest a relationship, and they're single, they're alone, and then they're alone time, they're trying to... Um, they got a lot of wishful thinking about getting close to this person and um, planning for, you know, partnership with this person. Um, if you're looking for new love, the best time to do this is probably going to be June to August. But again, you've got to be open to new experiences after reviewing some old attitudes. That's going to be required because the way that it was done before is not the way it's going to get done now. Okay. <laughs> um, there's you know, like in order to change your experience with dating you're going to have to change something with you right and so i'm going to say that i'm i'm with both of these cards i'm seeing a lot of idealization um and i see that somebody's trying to manifest and make plans for partnership this year but again they're idealizing something and they are either single or they are in a relationship where they feel alone. And so in order to really manifest something out of all these prospects, and you might have a lot actually this year with that seven of chalices, but you just don't know which one uh, you're going to be able to make plans with that are viable, you know. Well, I'm seeing that it's going to be very key to come into agreement. Again, whether you're single or partnered, there's that agreement again. Um, wow, that's a synchronicity, okay? We had that come up in the you know main energies that this is where you get your powers through agreement and what i'm seeing with that magician card is you know if you're in a partnership where you feel like you're alone you're going to have to get on the same page you're going to have to um, come into an understanding of what each person is contributing to the relationship and what are the wants and needs that one wanted to fall out Three of chalices, I mean, some of you really want to come together with someone on an emotional level. And again, you know, ooh, ooh, so you, some of you are very attracted to somebody here might be, well, that's your energy, okay. <laughs> that's your energy. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing a very, like, this could be a soul tie, somebody that you are soul tied to. And with the three of chalices, I don't like to be quick to say that is infidelity um because it's not in reverse right if it was in reverse i'd definitely say absolutely okay but i am seeing here definitely an energy of somebody wanting to come together on an emotional level and there's some really strong magnetic pull this could be a soulmate somebody somebody you've already slept with and i'm gonna say if you are alone you might be looking at them getting on with someone else or you're looking, whether you're, you know, coupled or single, you're looking at other people, um, particularly the beginning of this year, and you're like, I wish I had what they had. And there's a lot of temptation here and desire to, to have that emotional connection in your life. For some of you, perhaps the change that needs to happen um, within you in order to shake up your love life is that you're going to have to have a more lighthearted, innocent perspective about love and... I don't know this looks super deep you know super deep and uh you know i'm not going to fault you for that i think that some people are too they don't take love serious enough okay so i'm not going to talk you out of that if you're the kind of person that does take love serious well bravo 
bring it. We need more of that out in the world, okay? But I'm getting this vibe that perhaps there's something that's gotten too serious to the point of it's dull. Like, who would even want to get involved? Because it's just like, there's a heaviness maybe to it or a monotony to it that is just lackluster. I am seeing somebody moving on, though, okay? Uh, with the Six of Swords there. Where are you moving on to? Now I'm getting real curious. It looks like you're moving on. You're going to move on from something, right? That wanted to jump. That one wanted to jump. Knave of Chalices. I think you're trying to move on, but I mean, again, it's like this is a card having to do with jealousy, and I'm seeing a man here getting stuck out and looking at a woman with another man. I'm seeing it twice here. And you might need to move on from this, okay? I don't know if this is somebody you're very attracted to, somebody you had a relationship with. And I, the three's there, and the three's over here, and... Wow, I'm actually starting to feel bad about this. I feel like somebody is the odd man out. Somebody really wants somebody who is not giving them their attention. Wow, that is some deep stuff. So let me say with the astrology, if you are coupled, um, things might seem a little bit shifty this year. Um, but spirit is really just allowing it to bring positive change that opens you up to something fresh and new. And I can see it here like... This is somebody from your past, somebody that you've been fantasizing about, but you've never been able to actually like, and I can see you really want them. Okay. But you can't quite, you, you're not able to get this. They're, they're taken or you can't get on the same page with them. I don't know what the problem exactly is here, but I, it's like you desire somebody that you can't have. Um, or you, you desire something in the relationship that you can't have for those who are coupled, you know. You're going to have to try to go after something fresh and new. And, all right, um, actually, I'm going to take that. So, this came up about the couple relationships. Something is really stale here, I'm sorry to say. Something is very stale with that hangman um, in a committed relationship. Somebody might be impotent. I'm going to say that. Um, I don't know if you're, again, if for the couple people, you're dealing with some impotence in your relationship. There's that moving on again, and I saw it over there. I feel, and there's Knight of Pentacles again. I keep seeing, it's this is synchronicity, right? We have Knight of Pentacles in the main. And Knight of Chalices in the main. So, a lot of water, earth energy here. Which, by the way, water and earth go really well. You know, you would probably do best, generally speaking, with a water sign. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Where you got to look at the entire chart as a whole, right? Because I know an earth sign who has a stellium in air. And so, he's probably more compatible with fire signs. Right? Look at it as a whole. But generally speaking... A lot of water and earth here, and that's really compatible. There's that water sign again. Now I'm seeing the water sign being a female, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. And it looks like what the earth sign is offering, she's not happy with it. There's something with it. There's somebody's discontent. There's a timing issue. It's like he's offering something that is solid and stable, and this is what I was talking to you all about. So if you are, you know, Capricorn female, and the shoe fits, wear it, okay? If this is your energy where, you know, you're coming in and you're bringing something really stable and steady, um, it, it's almost like this other person is like, yeah, I'm not really interested in that. This might be somebody, um, I don't know why I keep, I know that I'm talking about couples, but my mind, as a reader, keeps going into, um, like, a dating scenario. So, again, is this some kind of, I don't really know that outright cheating is happening here. If anything, this is strong desires, wishful thinking, wanting, yearning. 
Okay, and I saw it over there as well. But I'm not seeing any sex going on here. With it. this, this is maybe somebody looking outside of the partnership. If they're partnered with somebody who can't get it up or keep it up, <laughs> you know, they they don't know how to hit the home run. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> it's just there's no fire there's no spice there's no excitement it's dull it's dreary it's predictable somebody wants to move on from it they are discontent with what's being offered um and they're wanting to move on to a water sign or um basically what they consider to be the ideal person like an ideal wife or mother would be you know queen of Charles is very empathic very loving very nurturing very healing and I do see progress being made because somebody's discontent about if this is coupled like I said there's an impotence problem or somebody just ain't getting the job done in the bedroom okay it <laughs> But then again, I'm seeing if somebody is looking outside a relationship, there's a timing issue and they're, it's this is with a friend they want to become more than friends. And they want things to move towards some kind of ideal, ideal partner. And again, we're going back to idealization, idealization, idealization. Wow. Okay. The advice here is that if you're dealing with a partnership where at least one person is wanting to maintain status quo, this could result in arguments. And I said that before, right? Yeah, arguments, separation, very painful, okay? Um, and there it is. There's the arguments and the separation. So my advice to you is, um, you know, with this pentacles that keeps showing up, somebody just wants to maintain status quo. All right, another person maybe wants to deepen the intimacy, the emotional connection. They're idealizing that. I think the advice here is that, you know, you need to try to break out of dull routines, but also be aware, particularly if you're dealing with a Scorpio. I don't see Scorpio here, but if you are particularly with that uh, sign, be aware of possessiveness. Um, regardless of sign, um, you know, there's some kind of revelation, I think, of... of trust issues that need to be worked on this year in order to deepen that commitment and yes if you are dissatisfied with your relationship which i'm seeing it here here and here somebody uh, can't get no satisfaction i don't know i don't i'm here rolling stones i can't get no satisfaction i never listened to that song that was random i'm just hearing that i can't get no satisfaction well if that's you, then you may need to consider, you know, ending the relationship, holding back, not giving yourself to this, not investing in that, so that you can pursue more romance in your life. That I see somebody here this morning with, um, yeah, the Queen of Chalices and these two Knights of Chalices. But I will say that as the year progresses, and it will, right, with that chariot, it will, um, that very same person, actually, that you're you're struggling to get what you want out of them, things might actually improve if you work on this together. So um, I think the best time for you to find stability in a romantic relationship is probably going to be July, August. But let's get into talking about, and I'm going to move this up a bit because you've got a lot of cards here. Um, starting in January with Venus retrograde in your sign, Capricorn, um, hitting your first house, and Mars is going to be up there twice, so that's giving you the opportunity to revamp something about yourself. Your appearance, your reputation, the way others see you. It could be something simple as like a makeover. Somebody might be impatient, though now I'm seeing the fire, okay? Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, but usually this is representing generally an energy of commitment, but with it in the reverse, uh, there's... there's Somebody is maybe not not listening, not hearing the other person out. Um, perhaps there could be arguments about it. There's some impatience. There's an inability to listen to their intuition or an unwillingness. There's a lack of mutual effort and commitment and sacrifice. You might be, you know, because this came out when I was talking about Venus retrograde in your first house, in your sign, you might be seen as this. 
just gonna say it, just put it out there. Is that your energy or, you know, does somebody with this energy see you that way? Now, I think that in January, you're going to maybe embark upon, you know, doing a makeover, perhaps. Again, something that makes you feel young again or look younger and healthier. If you're just focused on yourself during that transit, okay? And I think the first half of this year, you know, or I should say the first half of this transit, it's going to start off in December and, and an end at the end of January. But the first half of the transit, you're going to project this very um, loving persona, which I kind of saw there, okay? And I'm seeing it there. Like, is that you, you know? Um, you're going to have to figure out, and that just fell out. You're going to be coming across very loving, but again, somebody's holding back, not getting wish to film. Oh, oh, heck, what the heck is this? Oh, my goodness. Capricorn. This is during Venus retrograde. All right. This is this is in the, the context in which the cards came out. I feel that you are going to be reflecting, reevaluating. Not committing to something, you know, really, I think closing up and being very self-protective, it might have to do with um, an Aquarius, a Cancer, or a Pisces. Again, possibly Scorpio, but more more uh, Cancer Pisces I'm seeing. Um, and again, I'm seeing fire on either end of this um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So number of, um, number of signs coming up here, but I just see that. Um, what you're reevaluating is not giving yourself to something that you've lost your faith in. Maybe some secrets have come out and have revealed to you that this person is emotionally disconnected or that you need to emotionally disconnect from them. Although I can see that perhaps there's some emotional baggage that's making it hard for somebody to move on. And again, I'm seeing another, the energies on either end of this is impatience or I'm hearing irrational uh, this is what I'm hearing intuitively irrational type of behavior and again maybe conflicts arguments um, where you can't get an agreement because um, one or both parties not listening to each other or one or both parties not listening to their intuition these are communication problems here in a relationship that are affecting commitment and it's almost like somebody is just they're a closed book you, you know they're not open to this anymore um, I don't know why I just heard B.B. King, the thrill is gone, okay? <laughs> the thrill, this, I'm getting into somebody's business, all right? I think that you're going to have to address some fears and face them because I'm seeing a contrast here between um, fear and faith. There's been like a loss of faith, maybe in this connection or this commitment, and you having to face fears and maybe work on rebuilding your faith. In something that you've lost hope in. But with that eight of chalices in reverse, you are having trouble getting on with it. Okay, some of you are just avoiding something. And I want to warn you about escapism. And I may be saying like with the arguing and disagreements, somebody is like not addressing the big white elephant in the room. Like whatever you're bickering about ain't the real problem. Everybody's talking about everything but the problem, okay? Like, get to the source of it. I don't know who that is for. And I think that there's been, I think, you know, with both of these, maybe a, lo a loss of hope, okay? And somebody just kind of drifting or going through the motions, back to this Knight of Pentacles, going through the motions aimlessly because they're avoiding change. They have a fear of change or a fear of loss, my God, I'm getting into somebody's business. I'm sorry. Like, if this is resonating for you, uh, you need a personal reading. Come to me for it, okay? Um, moving on, because I, I don't, I mean, I could I could so go deep into that. We could get clarifiers. We could turn this into an hour-long reading. That storyline, right? <laughs> Let's get on with it, okay? <laughs> um, all right, the second half of the year, I'm going to say, which would be the last two weeks of January, you're coming, a, you're going to be coming across a very seductive to somebody okay or at least very magnetic and i saw that about you there with that devil card all right um you're coming across very sexually empowered 
And if not that, you know, if you're just one of these Capricorns that like, no, I, don't, I just care about my money, you know, then I think you're feeling more personally empowered and you are drawing people to you. So I think this is going to give you a boost to your self-worth as you get into the last two weeks of January. Um, and yeah, you know, maybe you are surrounding yourself relationally with people who are um, imparting this sense of worthiness to you. That's just an added bonus. Now, in April, this is going to be a peak time of blessings for you, um, hitting, impacting your third house um, with Jupiter there. For whatever you started, okay, like if you started a new course, um, you put your ideas in writing, you started building a stronger bond with somebody near and dear to you, this is going to really start paying off and blessing you in April. And that could result in you um, becoming less active and less talkative and more focused on private family matters. Um, some of you, there's disharmony in the home. I think you're going to try to work on reconciling that, okay? Um, in June, be aware of more arguments at home. Well, you know, I can see that astrologically and I can see it with the cards. It could simply be that you are, you know, doing some kind of renovation work or you're hosting some kind of gatherings. It could also be about you becoming more of a homebody. Although a lot, there's a lot of 11th house Aquarian, you know, astrological activity suggesting that there's friend groups that are somehow impacting you. But nevertheless, the cards are telling me that things are kind of upside down with the home life. And with the astrology, probably arguments there that need to get addressed. And might be some, you know, yeah, domestic strife, but it can also be some kind of um, dependency issues. Some of y'all are empty nesters or you have no children. And that might be, again, if you're alone and you're like, well, there's nobody here to argue with. Well, I think it might be within yourself. You're feeling a little bit um, out of harmony within yourself uh, emotionally because um, I just heard what's next. What now? Uh, because, you know, there's, well, there's nobody there to argue with except yourself, right? <laughs> and, and don't take that in the wrong spirit, please, because uh, I'm about to be an empty nester. So my heart goes out to you um, if that's your situation. However it presents itself, it seems like with relationships and romance this year, there is a need for healing, okay? And this is yet another card that is telling me that someone here is not listening to spirit. There's angelic guidance here on the table. There's an opportunity for healing here out on the table. But for some of you, the past is really dominating your future, which I saw there's some inability to move on. There's maybe emotional baggage that has not yet been, it remains unhealed. And so some of you, and again, I'm seeing with both of these cards, somebody struggling with change. I'm hearing an unwillingness to change. I'm being brought back to those pay, uh, Knights of Pentacles where you just keep doing this. And I'm, now I'm hearing return, like a dog returning to vomit. I don't know who this is for. Um, but there's, there's also for some of you excess. And I just heard lust for some of you. And then I heard for others of you, idealization, fantasizing. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm getting super nosy now. Let's just figure out what that is. Um, what's the shadow energy um, for Capricorn this year? It's a shadow energy for Capricorn this year with that devil card. Warning stagnant. Well, what did I tell you? Cold. Oh, goodness. Blah, blah. You know, like spice it up. All right. This is boring as all get out. And I feel the warning here is like if you don't make some changes in your life, if you, huh, this, now this is what I'm hearing. If you keep doing what you've always been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've always been getting. I'm sorry. I Now I feel like I'm calling somebody out, and I didn't mean to go that way. I really, really didn't. Let's see what needs to be healed. And I'm, I'm just going way deep into this for you, Capricorn. I hope you appreciate it because I didn't go deep. I didn't go this deep with the others. All right. There we go. Communication. Well, that's a <laughs> the mind. Okay. <laughs> I've been saying this this whole reading. This whole reading. I've been talking to you about disagreements, 
getting on the same page, finding agreement, that that's your key to victory, right? Having a mutual understanding, understanding one another's needs and meeting them. And I don't know why I'm getting that. Some of you be like, but I did this and I did that. But did you do what they valued? Or did they do what you valued? You need to communicate that. Because, right, somebody's coming in, you know, offering a lime and the other person wants a lemon. And they're like, but I gave you a lime. And she's like, but I didn't ask you for that. I asked you for a lemon. I know it sounds trivial, <laughs> but I, you know, maybe, maybe this lady has like had a lifetime of limes and now she's ready for a lemon and you just, you're just coming in, bringing another lime. I mean, I don't know where I'm going, but this is for somebody. Okay. And if it ain't for you, if it ain't your reading. All right. But I had to go there because it's for somebody. It's for somebody. We are going to move on to uh, looking at career and finance. Right. Hopefully, you know, maybe that's a little bit sexier than that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just so not sexy, Capricorn. You're going to have to spice it up this year. You're going to have to work on getting the spice. And if you're like saying, hey, that ain't me. That's them. you got to drop that. Right. You, you got to drop that like the bad habit it is. All right. Moving on. Career and money. Well, last year, let me say that um, that might have pushed you to find new money management strategies that I think you're going to put to good use over this new year. And at least I'd say the first three months of this year. Okay. And I think that it would be wise counsel for you to probably save as much money as you can. You've got the two of wands jump in there. So there is um, maybe you making a lot of plans and who are you partnering with this year business wise it might be an individual it might be a business it might be you know um it could be a number of things okay resources that you're aligning yourself with um but i think overall try to be as frugal as possible and i did see that in the general reading um where i think that you're going to try to be thrifty you're trying to um, not be wasteful, which is probably going to help because I think overall this year, your income and standard of living will rise. I, I don't think you need to hold back for, you know, um, you know, bad reasons, right? But just for being responsible, which you could totally do. Um, and especially I could see you getting um, increased income from unexpected sources that really boosts your standard of living this year. But um, try to keep your ears open for suggestions from other people about opportunities that come up and make sure that you're budgeting and man managing your resources in a way where um, if you have the opportunity to invest, if somebody comes in and communicates that, might be a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, um, you are able to take them up on that offer. And again, that's maybe why you want to just kind of be frugal and save your money. Because I'm going to say in the first three months of this year, I was just talking to my daughter about this last night. She's got a Capricorn midheaven. But I am really thinking that, you know, because of what's going on with the collective astrology in February, which I talk about in my 2022 astrology forecast, if you missed it, it will be at the end of this video. You can click on through. But given the collective astrology in February with the United States having that Pluto return in the second house, I have a sneaking suspicion that we will see the price of stocks and cryptos drop remarkably and they will go on sale, right? While everybody's trying to get out and, you know, run for their lives and, you know, cut their losses and all of that, it's going to be clearance time to buy low, sell high. And you might be able to get, you know, profit off of those investments in February by August. Well, I do feel here, again, there's some kind of advice, though, about people who are coming in with these messages. Um, looks like, really, it sounds really smooth. It sounds really good about some opportunity. But beware, because I'm seeing Wheel of Fortune in reverse, where um, this might end in misfortune it might not turn out well okay so um you know be ready for opportunities but also at the same time know that there might be some opportunities that come to you that are bad investments 
Um, look at the long term. What's going to give you the long term payoff? I'm, you know, I'm not talking about a get rich quick thing. I'm talking about, I think the payoff where you're most likely going to excel is over the long term. And yeah, also watch out for any kind of friends or this could be a water sign child or somebody under 30 um, who might be using you. Okay, um, just watch out for these. It could be somebody, again, a friend. Um, they're going through some kind of misfortune, things out of their control. But just be careful about givers and takers in your life, which I think generally you don't need to be told. I mean, y'all got at any given time a general ledger running in that head about... <laughs> oh god just makes my mind spin how y'all can keep up with the checks and balances but yeah you, you you know do not mess with the capricorns money don't they don't forget it they, they'll remember right down to the penny what you took <laughs> uh yeah so i mean i'm just for somebody needs to be cognizant of that all right i'm the same and um also do not be surprised if issues come up with assets like business property housing vehicles um things might not be smooth sailing the first three months of this year i'm definitely seeing it's it's external stuff going on it's not it's out of your control and again why you need to probably be as resourceful as you can um because you know shit's gonna get real probably in february ain't gonna lie and with that venus retrograde in january mm, everybody's reevaluating their money um now, the best opportunities for you to achieve your financial career goals probably March through June. But the advice is that um, during this time, March through June, you don't want to hesitate to grab opportunities when they come because other people might beat you to at night, right? I said be be cautious the first three months, but then the during the second quarter of the year, you better grab it while the grabbing's good, okay? Um, but use your instincts, of course, about what's secure and not. Again, Capricorn knows how to level up, how to remain sure-footed. If you just tap into that natural instinct that you have about making sure-footed decisions, it's going to um, serve you well. If you don't, well, you're probably going to end up taking some risks that won't go well for you. With your career and life purpose, um, I think this year things might seem unclear at times. And I think you're going to be working hard, looking for changes, making changes when it's possible. And I think overall that this is going to work out well for you. But as you're making these moves, know that it is helping your reputation to improve better than before. Seven of Pentacles in reverse, you know, it's almost like you might decide during um, this year that you are no longer going to invest in something that you have been. Um, some of you be careful about getting distracted. Some of you feel that what you have invested in, oh wow, has given you very limited success reward. And you really might not know where this is going over the long term. And I am seeing some of you getting a brand new start. Um, but, and it might involve an Aries for some of you, or again, I'm seeing a water sign female. It might be a female friend, could be a Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces showing up. These water signs are really showing up for you. Um, yeah, let me kind of move this around. I, I feel like Yeah, I feel like there's somebody, it might be a friend that is is advising you about getting a new beginning and no longer investing in something that has not been giving you the reward that you wanted. And that person might be telling you, you know, don't give this a second chance. Um, make a change in your life. Don't keep going around this mountain. Um, but with the six of chalices in reverse, some of you are idealizing the past and uh, there's some kind of emotional blockage here of you being stuck and stagnant holy crap i'm hearing immovable i mean being brought back to this is that you immovable you just want to keep what plodding along your path 
well, it's always worked, so let's just keep working it. I don't understand why it's not working now. Can we just keep doing that? That always, right? And and it's somebody is really, whatever area you're getting blockage, it might be a creative block. But she, wherever you're feeling stuck or stagnant, you're having to get a new perspective. Again, I talked to you earlier about this year being a time where maybe you got to change your your outlook on something. You got to get a new perspective. And it might have to do with a creative block. Again, a lack of creativity is dullness, boring, monotonous. Who wants it? You know? Um, this water sign, I'm just going to tell you, pay attention to the water signs that are coming into your life this year. Because I feel that they're there to help you with this. They're naturals at being creative, inspirational, intuitive, empathic, artistic. And I do feel that there's going to be, you know, probably a water sign, might be a female, might be a friend. Somebody who's coming in and saying, now, now, calm down. Let's look at this a little differently. Um, that might have been working for you in the past. But let's take another look at this and realize that it's not giving you the reward that you deserve and you need in your life. Don't look at this, you know, through rose-tinted glasses. You know, maybe you're just remembering the good times of how I got progress with that. But you're not remembering the bad times of how hard you had to work just to get an inch ahead, you know. Again, I don't know why I'm getting all these deep messages for y'all. Okay, let's talk about the employed Capricorns. Very likely this year you're going to switch jobs, get a promotion or a pay raise, but it will probably happen. If it happens, it'll be the second half of 2022. And if you don't do this, then you're probably going to feel compelled to do this. But it's very likely that if it happens, it's going to come through some social contacts, networking. So as much as you can help it, try to maintain you know, the healthy, friendly relationships because that could really prove to pay off. Right, it's coming again through a friend, friend group. The King of Chalices, um, this might be a new opportunity in, you know, the lines of healing, okay? Maybe um, the medical industry for some of you. Um, it's in the arts. It's in, uh, <laughs> oh, wow, I'm telling you, be creative because why? Maybe you got an opportunity in that, that field of work, okay? But you're dealing with some creative blockage or you don't see it, okay, that you're, it might be a water sign boss, okay? Again, water signs all over this spread. And I saw it in the relationships and romantic reading as well. If this is not a person. This is like working in the healing arts. Maybe you are um, a spiritual teacher, a light worker, okay? Uh, an astrologer, tarot, you know, um, massage therapist. Um, could be a number of things here. Some of you maybe yeah teaching, teaching these creative arts. Could be an artist, a designer, somebody who's very creative and brings healing and beauty to others. I will say also if you are self-employed, you're probably going to get expansion with your business this year, but I don't think it's going to be the smoothest process. Some of you might open a brick and mortar location um, that is highly, uh, the location is highly beneficial for your business. Like it's going to be prime real estate because you'll get a lot of business over there. And I could see you doing that, which by the way is interesting because during 2020, I saw so many of these brick and mortar shut down. And then in 2021, I saw so many pop up, back up. So there was, um, and you know what, they came back stronger, at least where I'm living, okay? When where I'm living is maybe different, right? Because we don't have all the mandates here in Texas. So people have been free to really thrive in business uh, unrestrained. Whereas in other areas, maybe you're not seeing that so much because of the governments, the local governments there are participating in this pandemic to kill off small business owners. But again, 
if you are in an area, yes, very possibly a red state where, you know, the small business owners are being rewarded, I could see you opening up another brick and mortar. Um, again, that is at a very premier location that is really going to bring a lot of business growth for you. And let me say also August onward, probably the best month for you getting opportunities in entrepreneurship. But by October through December, it's probably going to, circumstances are going to ne necessitate you revising the way that you're working again for entrepreneurs. Now, I did see that there might be some harmony, disharmony in the home here, some domestic strife going on. Wow, is this a move um, with that Knight of Wands, okay? Um, I do see that if you move, um, move home, I'm seeing this about the home, okay? But any moving going on is likely going to happen for Capricorn Rising between May 24th and July 5th when Mars is in Aries in your fourth house. So, May 24th, July 5th, possibly moving because I, I'm hearing something that's unsettling about what is going on in your home life. And I think that you're trying to resolve this issue again. I think this goes back to what I said earlier, that in the second half of this year, you are going, the, the North Node is going to go into your fourth house. And so you're very much trying to find your comfort zone and stabilize something within your private domestic life that has maybe been unsettled for quite some time. Now, if you're a student, you're probably going to be very focused on your education this year, but there are going to be a lot of distractions that are going to come up. Got to warn you, because if you're not aware of it, you don't respond to it appropriately, you're going to end up wasting a lot of unnecessary time. All right, I should say you're going to end up wasting a lot of time on unnecessary work. And I don't know why I'm hearing having to do things over, redo things. Queen of Swords in reverse. Now we've got an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. But it's almost like, again, that came up for the students, or even if you're not in formal higher education, it's, you know, whatever you're, if you're trying to learn something new, um, yes, it's almost, I'm getting some unfocused vibe off of her in the reverse. Um, very unfocused, and I might be, you know, resentful about something going on around you or you're dealing with people who are bitchy and um resentful and that is bickering going on or something is distracting you i don't know if there's somebody in your life that is kind of trying to derail you by getting into um arguments or bitterness and if not it's just like you know being unfocused being unclear about something is maybe derailing you and i think it it could be that there's some external pressures going on uh, maybe from friends or authority figures. But the advice here is that if you can, right, if you could put this in the upright and be very clear-headed and keep it logical and clear, then, you know, you're going to do fine. By the time it gets into finals, you're going to do fine. But probably with, you know, education or learning anything is the best months for that will be the first five months of this year. Because as we get into the year, it's going to start getting a lot more dramatic and there will be more distractions collectively for all of us. But I could see particularly you being, I, I'm seeing it <laughs> here, here. It's stuff going on outside of you that is sucking you in. I'm sorry to say, maybe trying to get you to change. All right. And now on that note, I'm getting uh, seven of wands and devil in reverse. So... Um, yeah, I think the advice here is that if you are clear, unclear, and unfocused, um, if you're being distracted by these external pressures, you, you need to resist it with the Seven of Wands, okay? You might feel like a lot of people are coming at you, demanding your attention, demanding that you, um, putting expectations on you, pursuing you, whatever, um, you're going to have to break free of it. You're going to have to take your power back. With the devil in reverse you're gonna you're gonna have to i'm gonna i don't know why i just heard get rid of any toxic relationships in your life people that are sucking you into their misery and i warned you about that earlier this year that it might be a friend around you that has something going something is upside down in their world but again this is something i've had to learn myself is that 
a lot of times we we sympathize with people who have gone through hardship and you know do the woe is me and all of that and 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 it looks like my gosh they're a victim of circumstances out of their control and then later on you find out that actually um they made a series of bad decisions that kind of put them in that position to be vulnerable in the first place and that the more you intervene the more you handicap them oh i think y'all know about that y'all know about it better than i do <laughs> and uh, i learned the hard way <laughs> and and, I, and i'm also getting that somebody some of you need to be reminded i, I i'm the, the the tough love and appreciating the struggle okay sometimes we want to rescue people Ordinarily, I don't associate this with Capricorn. I think Capricorn's usually one telling me this, but I don't know. I feel like I need to bring it up now for somebody here that um, it's the struggle that makes you stronger, right? I mean, I'm thinking of like um, when a chicken is hatching out of an egg, you know, if or a bird, you know, if you go and try to intervene and crack them out of that shell prematurely, they're not going to be able to survive outside of that shell because the struggle to get from the shell is what strengthens them so they can survive outside of the shell. So I don't know why I had to get onto that for somebody, but it's deep stuff today for Capricorn. <laughs> I want to add a couple more things with that January, you know, Venus and retrograde um, in your first house. This is going to be a really good time for you to reassess your net worth. Okay. Um, look at your possessions, look at your assets. And during the first month of the year, maybe liquidate whatever will give you a profit or help you cut your losses. Even if it's just selling gently used clothes on a place like Poshmark or eBay. And as you're sorting these things out, um, you know, it's also a good timing to declutter and donate things that you don't use, uh, don't love. And this is also going to help you process mentally how your values have shifted and where they currently stand going in the year ahead. It's going to be a really good process for you, I think. So reevaluate your priorities during this um, Venus retrograde in your first house. Make the necessary adjustments. Uh, realize that relationships with others that involve money or work can be tricky during this time. And it might be hard for you to relate to others or to rely upon others. So, you know, if that's going on, then it might be helpful to try to generate more understanding, which I've been saying this whole time through, right? Try to cultivate more understanding of others and their circumstances more intimately, okay? That doesn't necessarily mean sexual, right? It's just we have a deeper understanding of this person we go a little bit deeper we get beneath the surface of it we we talk about that big white elephant in the room that's awkward and uncomfortable you know um because i think that's what's going to be required to address the challenges i'm going to say also in march mars is going to square uranus so think of what happened in march of last year because um at that time mars and uranus weren't squaring like they are now but they were conjunct and so there will be some similar themes reappearing so think about what was going on in march of last year realize it's probably going to come up again guard yourself against any kind of impulsive buying i think you will with that four of pentacles and um realize that it's probably not going to be the best time for you to do any kind of impulsive buying uh, to make any major purchases, but it is a good year for you to start saving money for it, right? If an offer comes in and somebody's like, hey, what about this? Well, and it's big and it's a risk. Well, maybe you just start saving for it, okay? Um, wow, look at that. The lovers in reverse, death in reverse, queen of wands in reverse. Some of you are not going to be partnering with somebody anymore. You know, it's reached a point of no return. It might be a Gemini or a Libra is relevant. I'm also seeing possibly Scorpio here. I'm also seeing possibly fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius here. And I'm seeing someone pretty, pretty pissed off about this, okay? Um, and this came up while I was talking about Mars squaring Uranus in March. Um, this is somebody very impulsive, very demanding, okay? Um, pretty aggressive and assertive about their needs. Um, this might be, again, you partnered with this person in the past, 
maybe you're separated from them or you're in the, you're going to separate from them in March um, because they they don't keep their promises you've lost passion for them I kind of saw that in the love reading this you know this is maybe the love reading spilling over into the, the career reading and money reading right with a marriage partner or it could be a business partner there it might also be some envy creeping into this relationship but unfortunately it's gotten super ugly and if it's not you feeling impulsive to, to want to buy something, it might be somebody you partnered with in marriage or business. Like, I want to get this. And you're like, nope, we're putting the brakes on that. And if you want to drive this message home, if you want to ramrod your way through it, we are done. We're done with this. Pause a deep message. Okay, so in August, Mars is going to be in Gemini again, which could be a time of workplace conflicts and people having very duplicitous behavior. So be very careful about who you are associating with professionally because that could damage your reputation. On the positive, I could see new new initiatives getting kicked off in the workplace, new projects, new groups. Oh yeah, with the Ace of Wands, definitely a new creative start for you. And then at the foundation, well, Nine of Pentacles, uh, I'm loving this because it's telling me that you know you're going to be independent this year, and I think that I think that Capricorn likes hearing that. But your independence might be born out of some new creative start to kind of do do some independent venture. Yes, yeah, start a new job or open up a new brick and mortar location for your business. Let me see if I can get some financial advice for you. For Capricorn, please tell me what is the financial advice that does not want to go down. Do the work. Well, you know, I don't think you need to be told that. <laughs> visualize abundance in all forms okay so some of you dealing with a scarcity mentality and that needs to be worked through and i really saw that with um you know that four of pentacles okay um this is about honestly i feel like you need to get to a place of you control money money doesn't control you you have plenty you're just managing your resources you're not in lack right if you decide not to spend money it's not because you don't have or you're afraid of not having it's because you're the boss of that kingdom and you're ensuring that that kingdom endures you can give or take away at any time but you're making those boss moves to ensure that there's longevity to the abundance that you have and that you will continue to have that's that's a mindset for somebody out there um some of you with this putting the work in I think you definitely will. I don't think you need to be told to do it. But I do feel that this has a lot to do with the work of um, finding agreement with people that is powerful and it's empowering. So let's move on to health and healing. And um, let's see if I can get better lighting here. Yeah, better lighting. This is a year where possibly you're going to do more traveling and... Um, and that would be a good way to kind of loosen things up, open things up, uh, get more fun in your life, more creativity, right? If you're having a creative block or you're having a communication block, get out there and stir things up with a change of scenery, okay? Just be aware of any minor accidents that could be caused by carelessness. And also, some of you need to be careful of weight gain. Uh, that could be an issue, Um because, you know, and I never say that to people, never, but I'm seeing it in the astrology. Um, it could come about because of being so immersed in other areas of your life, especially work that, uh, yeah, you know, that you end up neglecting your health um, or you don't educate yourself about that um, and back it up with action because you're just so right. And I'm sorry, like I've seen the worst of this behavior out of the Capricorns where y'all can be so efficiency minded that you don't really look at putting quality nutrients, um, nutrient dense foods in your diet. You look at the cheapest, the cheapest, the cheapest. And, um, and then you go try to, you know, work like a dog and you, um, you know, you, you're damaging your body because you're not giving it the proper fuel to run off of. Keeping still, it's about meditation, self-renewal, composure, detachment, self-acceptance, equanimity, serenity. Getting this for a lot of the signs. And I think it has to do with a limitation maybe that you're feeling in your life. Um, 
yes, I'm being brought back to the Saturn, okay? Saturn in your first, second house, okay? This is about you, I think, trying to use this time for introspection. And really, whatever limitations are being brought to you, Spirit's asking you, how is this cultivating maturity within you and resilience within you? If there are issues with emotional insecurity this year, it's likely that you're going to find more of it around December when the sun and the moon is in your sign. But I think it would be really advised overall this year to give some attention to mental health because workaholism or just professional life could really take a toll on your private life, your personal health. So try to keep that balance. I hope I've said something here that has blessed you. Please know that I'm wishing you all the best. I'm wishing you a wonderful 2022. Till next time, be blessed.